two, one, and recording. Hey, John. Jim, what's going on? Hey, it's a uh, Friday before Labor Day, and there's a hurricane out in the Atlantic. But uh, it's all good. What's up? Yeah, on? we got the heat. We got the heat, not the hurricane here. Oh. Uh, it should head up your coast, your side of the coast soon. Um, so Tech Ed's coming up in four locations. You're going to be at one, I'm going to be at another. And I wanted to talk about some of the, the prep work and some of the community things around Tech Ed. So um, videos, you, you sent me a message about a video that you did. Some people want you to to send something that somebody actually did for you and there's the the snotties which is the I'll call it the silly side of videos the America's SAP network community networks home, funniest home videos um, but then we got the video choice awards um, if you were going to do something I know you've been thinking about this you just haven't had time what kind of things would you want to share with people or shoot yourself doing or talking about? Well, I think speaking particularly of the of the snotties, I think it's a great chance to really experiment a little bit with video, have a little bit of fun, try some different angles. And as someone who's still getting more and more comfortable with, with video, I really enjoy that process. And, and of course, last year I scored with the scariest performance uh, award, uh, which you know was sort of the result of just some humorous outtakes and that kind of stuff. Just gets you more comfortable, so that when you're maybe doing a video that's a little more serious or focused, you're just a little more comfortable. That's what I find anyway. And actually, this year I did a couple of shoots that I was thinking of including uh, a sign video. But I took more of a tack of trying to share something about myself because I think that's the other interesting thing about the signs is you can share a little bit about yourself that other community members don't really know. Um, so in, instead of necessarily trying to be funny, which is just one option, uh, I think it's more comfortable just to be natural and, and try to find something. And so I taped a couple of videos about uh, different kinds of adversity I've faced in the last year because I think a lot of people have faced a lot of adversity this year. But I couldn't really strike the right chord, and so I'm not sure if I'm going to submit any of those. But it was an interesting experiment, and sometimes it's good just to shoot and not worry about whether you're ever going to share it. Right, right. There's the practice, the things that you know you're going to throw away just to become comfortable with the media and with the technique. Um, one of my coworkers has said several times that she went to a tech ed, and there was her coworker, me, up on the screen. In, in the keynote um, asking questions so SAP said you know send in video questions and they didn't get up get that many so it really increased my chance to become famous as it were and I think that's one lesson I've learned that it really doesn't take much nerve or much uh, courage to do that uh, so it's, it's worth it the question that I ask I can't even remember but she may, she may not either, but she knows she saw my image up up on the the stage with you know thousands of people watching, and um, you know that that is kind of cool. Um, people know about it. Um, I think the I think the one good thing too that 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 brings up is there's just not a lot of sophisticated production values needed to to get your video in front of people that way. Right, and I'm even thinking about taking this video or this recording that we're doing and putting it on YouTube as a soundtrack with just a still shot. I've done that before because, you know, it's just another way to distribute it. It's easy and um, doesn't break the rules. Um, may, may not be very exciting to look at, but, you know, put it in the background and just, like, listen to a podcast. Uh, other people have come up with animations using still shots, Animoto or whatever to do a film as it were a video but without having to use the, the technique of a video camera um, so let's let's get into the kind of prep work both mental 
and maybe psychological about setting yourself up to, to shoot a video of yourself. You, you've done a lot. You've interviewed people. People have interviewed you. When you're in your own office, in your own studio, how do you gather up the moxie, as it were, to talk into a camera as if someone were there when you know that there's no one there? Um, yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, I think one of the big things is I do try to prepare a little bit. Most of my shoots are not very elaborate visually, but I like to keep a list of videos that I want to shoot a five time. And usually I like to keep the topics a little bit varied so that if I'm in the mood for one or the other. So I want to have kind of a list of topics. And then from there, I pretty much just want to shoot in a comfortable setting where, where I feel comfortable. And, and, and oftentimes I'll shoot a number of different videos or takes without sweating the perfection of each one too much. Uh, now, some people aren't very comfortable with editing, so they, you know, that, and that can increase the pressure. It's like, oh, I'm not comfortable with editing, so I just want to nail this. But with a little bit of practice, you can figure out how using most simple software to delete part of a video. And as long as you have that confidence, you can kind of delete a clip or two. Then you just kind of wing it, just kind of talk. And what I kind of like to do is just do that and then let it sit for a couple of days and go back to it with fresh eyes and see what I think. Um, now, the one thing I would say is sometimes when you're trying to do a, a, a snotty type video where you want a little bit of your personality to shine through, you may need to do a little bit of prep, almost like you're also the production designer and you know all the different roles you can play there. Like, for example, when you did that awesome video of you with all your hats, well, you had to organize that. You had to have all your hats there and ready, so your props had to be ready. And so sometimes when you have a shoot like that, you need to organize your visual props ahead of time. Um, sure, sure. And that was one that I may have done two takes on because I knocked something over or whatever, but um, I probably talked to myself out loud and said, here's what I'm going to say, just rehearse or practice. But I'm maybe more of an ad libber or ad hoc when I, I've got an idea, I may think about it for a couple of days. I may write it down, I may not. Uh, but that's my style. My, mine is more the Ed Woods B-movie, one take and we're out of here. And not everybody can get away with that. The I've never really gotten comments saying, oh, you should have rehearsed or you should have taken out some of those uhs and pauses. Uh, that's just me though I don't feel that I need to do a lot of editing or polishing of my work so I want to come across naturally in doing blogs I want to make sure I don't have typos or incomplete sentences but sometimes they slip through and there's other people that they want to get it out as quickly as possible and they're not going to go back and re-edit something as if it were the encyclopedia and they want to have an excellent entry um, they just want to they just want to move on so rehearsal is, is important, but spontaneity is also important, and there's also the time factor. You don't want to spend two hours making a 30-second video uh, because that's a lot of your time, a lot of your life. So what we want to see is a natural shot. When I do interviews of people at a Tech Ed or an ASO conference, I will tell them here's what we're going to talk about not give them a detailed script not let them think too much or sweat too much about how it's going to be and if they're okay with doing that take it 30 seconds a minute minute and a half and and that's it um, so w what do you think about that style it, does it play okay in Peoria I think it does uh, and I think part of the reason for that Jim is that I think in the SAP world, we get exposed to a fair amount of what you might call overly polished content. And I think as a result, we also kind of crave just more authentic communication that has a few blemishes here and there. And, and you kind of get used to the blemishes uh, because that's kind of part of what gets across that it's a real person on the other end sharing a moment from their day and reflections and polishing that up too much actually is sort of a backfire. 
so I think it does really work well. And, and I can tell you from my own approach, I, I often shoot like five to seven short videos each time I sit down. And a couple of them usually don't see the light of day. But of the ones that do see the light of day, I don't usually do much editing. Um, usually I clip a little bit at the beginning of the end when I'm kind of sitting down and setting up. And that's really it. I'd be very rare to take out like a pause or an awkward silence because I kind of feel like that's part, of, that's part of the game. That's part of what I'm trying to share is 